Okay, here's the painting. I figured I would put this on first thing right out of the uh, gates here. Um, this is um, our beautiful uh, tropical, beautiful beach scene here. You can uh, draw and paint from this if you'd like. Um, or you can come back to this point in the uh, video when you're ready to paint and then you can use the next video which I have which is the actual pencil drawing. So what I'm doing now on my videos is I hope this is really helpful for you. I'll put on uh, first up, right uh, at the start of the video, I'm going to put on the pencil drawing first. Then I'm going to put on the painting, finished painting as well, second. And then, the, you know, then all the steps and all the subsequent paintings and uh, drawings after that. So you'll have the finished work up front first here so you can see it. You can take pictures of it, save it to your, uh, com you know, to your computer, to your laptop, to your iPhone, to your iPad, whatever you use for your electronic devices, you know, or you can take a picture of it uh, with your uh, phone devices um, from a screen. You can take pictures of uh, paintings right off of a laptop or a computer screen. So however you want to do it, be creative. But um, the best thing is if you can work from this finished painting, you're always way better off because um, you can see all the colors and you'll kind of be much better off seeing all the colors I used right on the painting itself versus trying to look at a photograph of something and then trying to figure out what I did. So always, gr always great to work from the painting. So I'll just leave this up for a second and then we'll uh, start our drawing after this, uh, after these few videos of the uh, pencil drawing and the painting. And here's the painting, close up. Okay, welcome everyone. This is the drawing portion. So I wanted uh, just to um, put the drawing up here. This is a great time. If you want, you can pause the video and draw from this actual um, pencil drawing we have here. So uh, I'm just going to leave this up for a few seconds. You can pause your video. You can do a screenshot if you want. So you can save that to your uh, device. And then you can print it out. You can print it out on printer paper and uh, have it to use for your drawing or you can just pause the video and draw right from this, or you can draw from the actual finished painting. It's up to you, but I figured I'd stop the video here and just make this quick uh, portion where you can, uh, if you want, use this uh, pencil drawing that I did as your um, uh, reference for your, for your drawing if you like. Okay, so we're going to get into the drawing now, everyone. Thanks. We're just uh, moving right along here. Um, so the drawing here is going to be uh, um, a light pencil drawing with a number 7.7 .7 millimeter. Uh, I use a Pentel uh, retractable pencil. It's a mechanical pencil. works really great. Um, so I will use this to do the drawing. It's a little thinner if I'm using it. Basically, if I do a larger uh, painting, I'll use the 9.9 um, .9 millimeter pencil, retractable. Uh, if, I'm if I'm doing a small painting like this, this is maybe like a 8x8, um, 7x7 seven seven square. So we're doing like more of a square composition now. Uh, I'll use for 7x7, seven seven, you know, 7x10, seven 8x, even like an you know an 8x10 or an 8x12, 10x12. Uh, you know, a 7 is good. 0.7 millimeters is good. You know, it's um, the larger the uh, painting, you, you just want to use a little bit of a larger um, uh, mechanical pencil with the lead being a little bit larger so that, uh, you know, it's um, going to show better uh, th through your painting if you like that look. If you don't like the pencil kind of showing through your painting, you can just, you can usually stick with a, like a 7 all the time, a 7 millimeter all the time. And um, so we're going to um, just keep uh, that in mind as we start our drawing. And uh, we're going to do a beautiful, again, a beautiful beach scene. Uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to bring you right into that feeling of the beach. Summertime, sunlight, hot sunlight. You're out there you're getting a tan, uh, going into the water, getting a little uh, toes wet. 
all that good stuff, you know, being at the beach, maybe have a little uh, sipping on some iced tea or your favorite beverage, um, you know, the breeze blowing, the, the palm trees swaying, have a good time, get into the mood of the painting. Uh, like I always say, if you get into the mood and you think about your scene that you're painting, whatever it is, uh, you think about it a little bit, you, you contemplate it, you um, get into the feeling of it, you'll, you'll notice that your painting is going to come out just a little bit better. You know, same thing with your drawing. Drawing will come out a little bit better if you prep a little bit beforehand, just getting into the mood of it. All right, so we're into the mood now. We're into that beautiful, maybe tropical. We're out in the tropics or maybe we're in our local beach where we live in that area down the shore. And uh, all right, so now we're going to... We're going to do our normal uh, layout of our um, hash marks around our tape. Let's do that. Okay, so the sunlight's going to be coming from the right. So I'll put my light insignia. And that looks fine there. There we go. So our light's coming from this direction. And uh, now we have that. Then we're going to say... We're gonna have a little, um, a little uh, hut on the beach here. So that's gonna be the bottom here. So we'll say the bottom, bottom of hut. We're gonna have a little uh, grass and uh, cloth hut with our lawn chairs and all that good stuff. And um, so that starts about there, the bottom. Then the top is maybe about here. So we'll put top hut. And uh, once we have that, that's pretty good. So I'm looking across here and I'm saying that looks fine. Um, and then uh, we're, with the hut, we're going to make the bottom of the palm tree over here the same level as the, um, the hut. So we could put uh, palm tree, bottom of palm tree. Then over here we can put top of the hut might be more, maybe more here. And then the top of the palm tree over here is going to be a little bit higher than that. Top palm tree. So yeah, make your notes over on your uh, tape. On you know, you always tape around your border of your watercolor painting. Make your hash marks. Get your approximate heights of things, plumb lines of things. If you know, like here, the hut's going to be about about halfway across. So we'll say hut here and here. So our hut's going to be from here to here. You can even do that, and that that should be enough uh, information. We could also do the palm tree, the palm tree over here. If the hut's over here, palm tree will be about here. We'll make that a little closer, maybe. Palm tree, and then, and then we're going to have some lawn chairs over here, but that, that we can just draw in. All right, so we have our um, our hash marks around our tape, just so we know where we're going to put things approximately in the painting. We have our light insignia, so that we know where our light's coming from, so when it comes time to paint, or even if we're going to do a little pencil marks with our shadowing as we're drawing, maybe sometimes we like to draw in the shadows a little bit with our pencil. So if we're going to draw in our shadows with our pencil, then we would, you know, better off having our light insignia up here too. Uh, right from the start. Okay, so that's really a great way to start. Let's take a quick break. Um, always great to take breaks, and then we'll get into the drawing. Okay, we'll just take maybe five minutes just to relax a little bit, and then we'll come back and start drawing. Okay, I'm glad you're here and you're back again with us. We're doing our drawing right now, our pencil drawing. So um, let's get started. Uh, we have our hash marks all set up, and we just basically we did our hash marks. We did our light insignia. We um, 
we're at the point where we we took a break, just five minutes, just just a five minute break, just to relax, five ten minutes. And you can also too, you know, if you're really busy and you and and it's at nighttime and you have to take, you know, you can always come back the next day and start this. I'm just kind of, I usually do uh, my videos here and my paintings. I do them all, uh, usually within you know three four hours time. So with breaks and everything. So I'm usually working like a half a day doing my drawing and my painting here on 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 video that you're seeing. So that's why I take, you know, five, 10 minutes. Sometimes I'll take like 45 minutes if I go to get some lunch or some dinner and I'll come back and I'll keep working. But whenever I say take a break, it can be five, 10 minutes or it can be a half an hour or it can even be, you know, the next day you come back and start working on it. So it's your pace. You, you're the artist. You uh, plan out your breaks. And of course you can always take, uh, you know, a break overnight and then come back the next day and start your painting up again or you're drawing up again, it's all up to you. You can do this in a week's time where you start out the first day, you get your hash marks your first day, you maybe work an hour if you're very busy and you don't have time. Your second day you come back, you, you know, you're gonna put an hour in each day maybe, or half an hour. Second day you come back, you do the pencil drawing like we're gonna do. And then the third day you maybe come back and you start doing the first part of the painting. So, you know, you can stretch it out as much time as you have you put into it. If you don't have a, a, a lot of time in one day to do everything. You can space it out over three, four days, or even a week. It's up to you. So I just want to r remind you that you have options when, when you're drawing and painting with watercolor. What, a great thing about watercolor is you can really, you can stop anytime, take breaks. You can, a couple days, you can wait a week, come back a week later. So you just work at your own pace. That's all. Have fun with it. And uh, we're going to keep going here. And as I always mention, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It's very easy. You just hit the subscribe button below. And um, this way you're alerted every uh, week when we do a new video. We're doing, you know, one or two videos every week. So you'll always get alerted to when our new videos come out. And also, too, uh, if you hit the uh, bell, the little bell next uh, to the right of the subscribe button, that bell will actually give you a notification that sends you an alert of exactly when the video comes out so you'll know exactly when we're starting up and, and putting out a new video. Okay, so let's keep going here. So we're going to start out. I'll start out with the hut. So I'm going to come over here and we said the hut is over here. And you can always sketch in some light lines just to sort of get things. I'll contour draw this and those, you know, those that follow on a regular basis, you know, contour drawing is basically you're starting with one line and just continuing throughout the painting, a drawing with one line and you start and you just go from there. So I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to go up here and then the hut goes across here, comes across here and then we have some palm trees here, a small palm tree, and then we have another palm tree here. Okay, so that's the palm tree here. So I'm going to try to work around the painting, the drawing, and I'm not just going to do one area at a time. I'm going to go right around and just keep working through everything. Okay, so that's one of the support posts for our canopy here. So we have a canopy. It's a wood canopy for shade. And then here we're going to have the other post. We're going to have some shadowing over here. And we have some we have some Curtains, some nice beautiful curtains here. White curtains, and then there's a, a chair here. And then there's a table back here. Looks like a like a cushion, maybe, some some seating here behind these chairs. And here we're gonna have again the We'll have some more of those curtains up. And there's another support there. Okay, and we can just see we're moving right along. 
Um, there's some supports here for under this small seating bench. And then there's the dark shadow there. So we just kind of make a little dark shadow there. And there's another post here. And then in the distance here, there's another palm tree that's probably part of that. And then there's another palm tree over here that comes down to here. And that's part of this palm tree. And you notice I just do the palm trees real loose, you know, nothing too And I'll just put some of those lines in to let us know we're, we're uh, swaying in the breeze here with our palm trees. And Okay, so we have a really good amount of work done on the right side. Let's, let's move on over here. And this palm tree is about here. And it comes up like so, and the branches, so I'm going to always look at things. I'm looking at my photograph here. You'll work from this painting, though. You won't work from my photograph. You'll work from my painting to draw and paint. And then here, the uh, leaves and palms themselves are going to be at this level here with the canopy. And then again here. Make these loose and fun. If you're going to do these palm trees, you're way better off just having a loose, fun time with them. Just make them flowing. Make the make the palms flowing like the wind. Like just get into it. The wind is blowing. You're better off doing this than sitting here and trying to suffer and draw it really slow. So you're better off going quicker. A lot of times, you know, going faster and more freer and faster is going to save you as far as the way you're your drawing and your painting comes out. If you go really, really slow and you're like kind of trying to get every little detail, don't, wor don't worry about all the, uh, every detail. Just have some fun with it. Put on those branches, you know, just kind of get a, get a, get a, a flow going with your, with your uh, pencil like this, like one, two, and then three, you know, like that. And then one, two, three, and then one, to, you know, you slide your hand on the paper with your pencil close to the paper, and then when you're ready to do the the um, palm, and you have that kind of feeling like, okay, I'm getting the feel for the curve of that palm on that palm tree, then you just go for it. And then another one, one, two, three, like that. Perfect, right? That's going to look much better than going real slow and agonizing over, is it just the right angle, or does it look like it's flowing in the right don't worry about it. Just have fun with it. If you do it quick and fast and fun, it's going to look 100% better. And <clears throat> that's really a kind of a fun technique I learned, and it really works. A lot of artists do that. A lot of pro artists will tell you um, being carefree with your strokes, with your brushes, and being carefree with your drawings and your pencil lines is going to look better. Being carefree and fun and having a loose, fun time Versus like trying to be like very slow and extremely, you know, agonizing over those angles or, you know, it's better. It looks better when you just kind of. All right. So <laughs> we're having fun here. Go with the flow. Have fun. Make those lines quick, fun, free, and you'll be set. Okay. Now we're really Wow, we've really come a long way here. It, you know, if you need a break when you start drawing, at this point I'm still good. I can still keep drawing and I'm feeling, you know, good. And my concentration level is really good still. So I won't take a break here. But if you need a break, you can also take breaks. Even if I don't say take a break, if you need a break, take a break. No big deal. All right. Okay, so now we got this palm tree in. It looks good. Um, it's just a little bit higher than the bottom of this. Uh, bench and canopy 
and that's about right. Looks good. There's a happy uh, shadow on that area there. Kind of get that like that. Shadows too. Shadows are really fun to do and they're carefree and fun too. You don't want to worry too much about your shadows and, and plan them out too much. Just, you know, sketch them a little bit on your drawing and then when you're painting them, we'll, we'll do the same thing. We'll just have fun and get a little shadowing in there. Okay, now there's another bench out here. Look at that. A bench out here for sitting on and enjoying the ocean and there's someone here they're on the bench and then they're sitting there let's make that person there and then right next to that there's an there's a chair and it's a little bit angled that way there shadow underneath don't worry about your pencil drawing so much. We'll get all these details when we're doing the painting. So we have a little shadow under the chair. There's a bench here. We have a little shadow under that. We have the ocean. Now for the ocean, no worries. If you have to, I'm going to use a ruler here. Take a ruler to get your ocean, your uh, horizon line on your ocean. And for here, it goes right across like that just above that chair over here on the left you can see that chair this is a chair and there's a figure here on the bench and the ocean distant ocean uh, horizon line or the distant ocean uh, level level line is right here so I'm going to take that and make a nice level mark all the way across There we go. Sometimes uh, rulers can be uh, a little bit uh, difficult. Okay, there. I'm, if you if you actually go over a spot like for here, I my pencil line went over that. Uh, over this um, th uh, this curtain here, so I just erase that pencil line out of that curtain. So you just try to when you're doing your pencil lines, just a thing to note. Um, just a thing to note, I guess, when you do your pencil lines, if you're using a ruler, is sort of do a lighter line and kind of just be aware of when you're going across. You probably don't want to do do too much crossing over like the tree here and the. Um, curtains and things if you can. You could tell I went over a curtain here, no big deal. I just took a kneaded eraser and so it's not a big deal if you go over a few spots, but if you if you do, you come come you come back and just do a little light uh erasing and you and you'll be fine. And that's really I'm looking at this painting and it looks pretty good. I noticed that I was a little bit tighter and and took a little more time and did a, this a little bit more you know, not as carefree as I did this one, this palm tree. So these palm trees over here, I think I should have drawn them a little more carefree and fun and loose. What I'll do is though, when I'm painting them, I'm gonna actually do them more, you know, loose and fun over here on this, these here. These here, I drew them perfect and they're nice and loose and I was kind of trying to demonstrate that and actually that's, you know, they came out just right. So, I think we're, we're just right there. Okay, so now, one last thing. I want to get a little bit of the shadowing on this here. Okay, so I just wanted to pencil in a little bit of shadowing for these palm trees over here. And I'm just doing a little bit of a just to remember these are palm trees so I make a little bit of hash marks here and there on the uh, trunks of the tr tree all 
All right, perfect. Let's take another break and we'll be ready to we'll start painting next. So five, 10 minute break and we'll come back and we'll start painting this. And you're going to see the painting goes a lot more, uh, you know, f painting is a lot more fun. Once we have our drawing down really well, then we can paint. We have a lot of fun. We have our guide set for us. So we're just really stress-free, stress-free painting. We're just going in with our colors and just, uh, you know, having a good time versus, you know, I know some people don't draw first. I always say, you know, definitely do your lines and draw first before you paint because you really, it takes a lot of the stress out of things. You already know where everything has to go. Everything's laid out for you. It's almost like those old, you know, books we used to use as children. Remember those? You know, when you did the uh, coloring books, everything was there. All the lines were perfectly there and you just take your crayons and you go in. It's the same idea. When we do our pencil drawing, all your lines are down, they're all there, and then it's like crayons. Your paints are now your crayons. You go in and you just, you paint, and you get in your colors, and you're good to go. Okay, we'll come right back in a few minutes, and we'll start the painting. Okay, everyone, welcome again. We're just starting up our uh, painting now. We're going to get our uh, brushes ready and uh, start the painting here. I'm using a, a six round Escada Reserve, Reserva, Charles Reed series. Great brushes. So I have my uh, water, fresh clean water, freshly uh, squeezed tube paints, not dry, not hard, totally soft, moist. And we're ready to uh, paint. Let's get started. Um, I changed my tape so that we wouldn't be kind of uh, distra distracted by the um, by the uh, black uh, magic marker for our hash marks around our painting. Now that we have our drawing done, we don't really need the hash marks anymore. The only thing I left was the light insignia, as you can see, so that we know our light source, where it's coming from. This way when we do shadowing, when we start painting shadows, we just can glance up there and go, oh yeah, that's right, the, the light's coming from this direction, so the shadows are all gonna be going this way. The cast shadows are gonna be underneath the subject matter going to the left. So that's all, just that, that's why we put that um, light insignia. All right, woohoo, we're starting our painting. Let's have fun here. Okay, raw umber. Raw sienna, burnt umber, burnt sienna. Let's get some wood colors and we're gonna do our beautiful um, wood canopy here. So let's do that. Let's do our darker colors. Let's do a little cerulean blue too. Warm and cool everywhere. So we'll do a little warm and cool. So we're going to do some cadmium red too. That beautiful cadmium red, that's... And I rinse my brush and then dry it off a little bit on a tissue or um, my, uh, I have a uh, apron on. Sometimes I'll just touch my brush to my apron or I use some paper towel or some sponge. You can figure out what you like to use best, but I'm just gonna do the uh, tissue right now. So I have my tissue, I dry off a little bit there. Okay, so we're getting the darker tonal values underneath this. And we put that, again, that little bit of blue, maybe some cobalt blue just to get some warm and cool. And some burnt umber. And we have some raw umber, yellow ochre. That's the top of the, uh, these look like wood wood uh, planks going across. So I leave the wood planks like that. 
and we mix up here and then we just take our brush strokes and now we're going to go down like this and yellow ochre like that and then we have another perfect look at that we're already uh, making a great start here a little warmer colors mixed in there so a little bit of burnt sienna a little bit of blue for shadowing under here. There's a, it's a little darker under here. So we put a little shadowing under there, like so. A little bit of uh, cadmium red. We're always trying to get a little bit of interesting color vibrations in there. And we have another line there. So that's more of the canopy, looks good. Okay, and then some sky color. So we can put some sky color in there now. Just so we have that. And since we put that sky color in, we won't put that other wood uh, beam in there right now. We could have left that out, but no big deal. A little bit of blue in there. And uh, okay, let's continue on. Let's get some of them darker tonal values. Burnt umber, burnt sienna, some French ultramarine blue. We have a chair over here, a beach chair. Might be one of those really nice wooden or um, that looks like, yeah, one of those really nice wooden beach chairs. It's got the wood on the back and then probably cushions on the front. So we're just imagining how interesting that is. A little bit of cool colors in there. And then we have, um, let's see here, a little bit of shadowing under that bench. So I'm just taking my time carefully doing a shadow under that bench there. And it's got wood, so we're going to put wood in there too. So we'll do that. And we'll just keep going with the flow. Some purple, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, so we'll mix a little cool shadowy color. And that goes under the bench here. Okay, so we're just working our shadows now. And again, you're going to work from my finished uh, watercolor. So you'll work from this finished watercolor once I'm completed. So you've already seen this finished painting already. And now you're just uh, seeing me paint it, but you did already see the finished painting. I put that before we did this painting here. So you can work from that if, you, if you'd like to go ahead and just go ahead of... Um, Go ahead of me and just do start doing the painting. We'll do some shadowing under here. And okay, so we're we're kind of getting those the canopy beams here in. Those look pretty good. And there's some darks in here, a little bit of Again, we're having fun. So let's do some fun happy brush strokes here. Like that. Okay. So this area here is pretty good for right now. Um 
let's keep working. I think we'll start working on the uh, palm tree. So we're going to have cerulean blue, some purple. It's for shadow colors. So we have that. And then we have some raw umber. Maybe some red there. And uh, some cerulean blue. That looks better for the uh, palm tree. It's kind of got that grayish color. All right, so let's do that. Let's add in that grayish color, which was uh, cadmium red and cerulean blue. Makes that nice kind of grayish color for the um, palm tree. Look at that. Beautiful. Wow. And, uh, oh, that's okay if you have that happen. Your brush drops, no big deal. That's why I splash all the time. I stay ahead of things. I splash first. I see I didn't splash quick enough. I needed to splash before that happened. So that I, I always remember to not worry about those little issues that happen with watercolors. Let fun things happen. If you drop your brush or you splash something or spill something, no big deal. You just keep going. And that's the other uh, palm tree over here. So we make a little I just lighten that up a little bit. If you make your palm tree a little bit um, wider than you anticipated, then you just add another post over here. You add another wood post, and you'll never know. No one will ever know. Just like that. So I added another post because my palm tree I made over here on the left was too big and too wide over here. So I just add another post. Add something else. Throw you know, put something else in there. No worries. Watercolor is fun. You just change things around. If, if if you have an issue, you can go over something, add something. No worries. Okay, now we've got the um, really nice look of the palm trees over here. This is still wet, so I'm not going to go back in and do any darks there, but I will come back later and do a couple dark uh, details with, with this palm tree on the right. But for right now, that looks good. Um, let's start getting into the greens, sap green, olive green, burnt umber, I mean uh, raw umber, um, yellow ochre, some cadmium lemon yellow, cadmium lemon yellow, get some of that there. Okay, now i splash a little bit. Rinse my brush, dry my brush on the paper uh, paper towel or tissue, and then we can start. We can start going in with our happy uh, palm trees here. Look at that. You can add some burnt umber to that too. Some raw umber, some burnt umber, cerulean blue. There's a little bit of darks in there. We just try to remember to keep those, that feeling of the um, palms and the, the leaves and branches and things like that, kind of heading up towards the light. And once that is like that, then you can get some more greens. And I'm not going to, again, I'm going to do some fast fun just like that. And then we add some of that lemon yellow to just give it that nice lemon yellow look. And then some yellow ochre as well. And we'll do the same thing. Some nice carefree fun brush strokes like the darker palms are going to be over here under that area. 
and then And that looks pretty good. I add in some more green, darker greens there. And that should be good. Okay, perfect. A little bit of purple shadowing colors and French ultramarine blue. Maybe add in a little bit of red there and orange. Just for some interesting color variation. Orange. Okay, then we will take a break. Let's take a break now. I've, I've been working probably 20 minutes, uh, you know, 15 minutes. So I'm starting to feel like I just want to take a little quick break and we'll come back in like five, 10 minutes. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, so we're moving along here on our painting. Uh, no need to worry if uh, something goes a little bit uh, uh, off the game plan, as you can see, we had that little issue where I dropped my brush. Again, just, you know, don't let that kind of stuff bother you. If you drop your brush, no big deal. Um, if your painting goes really, really bad, you can start a new one. You can flip your paper over and start another one on the other side and just start back again with the drawing and, and whatever, you know, and then the painting. But uh, I'm having fun here, as you can see. We're having lots of fun. So I'm going to go in cerulean blue, sap green, um, using my needlepoint brush here, number six needlepoint, a little bit of burnt umber. And I just want to try to get some of those fine uh, needles for the needle uh, for the beautiful uh, palm trees. So you can see, I'll do some of those uh, fine fine lines here. So as long as, as long as I get a couple of those really nice indications of some really fine uh, leaves on the uh, palm trees, I'm fine with that. And uh, we'll just keep working. And when we do the sky, some of this will kind of like, if you can see some maybe some, you know, some washes that got a little bit out of control over here, no big deal. When we do our sky wash, that's all going to blend in really nice and we won't even really notice that. So we're going to keep, uh, keep working on our painting portion here and let's uh, start working on this palm tree here so I'll use some more of that cadmium red and uh, cerulean blue cadmium red cerulean blue maybe a little touch of that green there we go perfect and some purple and French ultramarine blue, maybe just a little shadowing on this side. And we have that shadowing color. We can just uh, kind of wiggle around our brush a little bit and then we have our shadow right there. 
for this for this grouping of trees here. Maybe a little more spots of shadow there. We're going to leave the white paper for the sand. Maybe a little touch of uh, uh, yellow ochre for the sand, but what we should probably, I think it'll look really nice if we just leave it the white uh, white paper for the sand, actually. So we have, um, we're working on this here, our palm tree. Let's, let's maybe do our chair there. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. We'll just get a little color, dark there. That looks good. Purple. Then we have uh, we have that bench there with the shadow underneath it. So we could do that. That looks fine. And so we'll let this uh, dry a little bit over here. Maybe we'll do the figure. Maybe the figure's going to have some, maybe a red shirt. So I'll put a little red, sh uh, some red color for the shirt on the figure and then a little brown hair. And that should be good. <clears throat> and then here, let's one more shadowing there. Again, carefree, have fun when you're doing your shadows. Don't get too worried. Kind of just do some real, you know, haphazard marks on the paper for your shadows, and, and that'll be fine. Shadows are mysterious, so. And then we'll do some more palm trees here. So again, I'm going to do some fun, fun brush strokes like that. See, perfect. Uh, some cadmium lemon yellow. Splash. I'm going to do a little bit of splashing with the. Yellow ochre. And then we'll use our uh, fine needlepoint brush to do some of the. And that's all. And then purple, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and just a little couple dark spots in there for shadows. And some lemon yellow, cadmium lemon yellow. Then we do some sap green mixed into what we already had mixed there. And we just do our nice, fine, beautiful Beautiful fine lines for the for the needles on the palm trees. Sap green, maybe a little bit of cerulean blue. A little bit of French ultramarine blue if you want to go darker on some of them. Like that. Again, have fun with this. Just have fun. Carefree. Try them a different couple times. If your painting doesn't come out perfect the first time, no big deal. Try this painting two, three times. Each time it'll get better as you do it. And uh, you'll see if I just flick some paint. There we go. A couple splashes. Good. Perfect. Look at that. 
maybe a couple little dots of color, a couple red there, a little bit of orange. Perfect. Look at that. All right, we're already we're getting there. We're almost completed actually. So we have our palm trees done. We have our uh, our canopy done. Our figure done with the bench. Our chair over here. And shadowing. Oh, well, that's really we have to. Let's do this. Let's get the. There's some, a uh, couple uh, towels here. So let's do that. Okay. Looking fantastic. Hey, we're almost completed. Let's take one more break. One more break. We'll come back. We'll do the water in the sky. And then we'll be absolutely complete. And uh, you'll see that this really, once we do the sky and the water, the painting is going to look like 100% better, actually. And it also, it looks good now, but when you do that water in that sky, it's going to look even more fantastic. So stick around, come, stick it out, hang out for another 5-10 minutes when we come back after a break, and we'll do, again, the sky and the water, and you'll be amazed at how good this is going to look. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, things are coming together here. We're back. We're going to do another um, couple washes and we'll be, we'll, you know, we'll be completed with this painting. It's actually looking excellent already. We've got uh, some beautiful palm trees. We have our um, uh, figure here on a bench out on the uh, sand. We have uh, some interesting details. Another uh, chair here, a nice uh, interesting wooden chair, some towels. Um, we have our uh, canopy here with our uh, curtains, white curtains, and then as we paint, you'll see it'll all come together now because the dark behind uh, the blue sky and the blue ocean is going to actually um, bring everything to life here in this painting and make the light uh, come alive. So let's let's get started here. The first thing I'll do is I'm going to make the um, distant ocean a green and bluish color so uh, French ultramarine blue uh, a little bit of burnt sienna a little bit of sap green nice dark and we'll do that and we'll go across and we'll just take a nice take our time we just want to get a nice dark there make sure it's good and dark so we make sure we use the straight paint Burnt Sienna, French Ultramarine Blue, Sap Green. Let's make that really, really dark. And we can make it thinner and then the line a little thicker. Like that. And then, it's, then we're really careful over here that we don't paint over the uh, palm trees and the uh, posts. Then we'll come in with some green and we'll just sort of fade this in a little bit. We'll try to see how we fade that in a little bit there. So we try to take that dark line we just put across there and just kind of moisten it a little bit with the um, green, a little bit of the greenish color we have there. And if we moisten that up, it kind of blends really nice and it looks very natural like the ocean, the distant ocean. And we'll go right across like that. Now over here it's not as important because we're, we've got all kinds of uh, vertical uh, interruptions to the water line here. So that's not going to really bother us too much. Then we're going to go with some Viridian Green. This should look really beautiful, the Viridian Green. Um, it's kind of, and if we, if we notice, I'm going to blot up a little bit there. And then with the Viridian Green, I'm just going to 
leave some white paper here and there for waves. That looks great, doesn't it? The Viridian Green just looks beautiful. That turquoisey green. Perfect. You can already see the sand looking bright and sunny. Excellent. Okay, now we'll move up to a bigger brush. I'm going to use the number 10 Raphael. So this is a, a Raphael brush, number 10, Kalinsky Sable, round brush. We're going to do the sky. Let's use a big brush to do the sky because it's a large area. Let's do the sky, cerulean blue and cobalt blue with a little bit of French ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt sienna too, just to give it a little bit of... Uh, um, character to it and then I'll just mix that color up again same thing cobalt blue a little bit of French ultramarine blue burnt sienna cerulean blue over here so we'll mix up our colors okay let's start up here A little darker up here. French ultramarine blue makes it a little darker up top. Then we just sort of bring it, bring this down. Just keep working the wash downwards, like so. Cerulean blue. So we go with cerulean. We leave a little bit of lights in there, a little bit of white paper. Leave some white paper there, and, and then here and there too in the sky. And then as we do our cerulean blue closer to the horizon line, let's put a little couple clouds in there. Like that. Just a few clouds. Perfect. Then a little touch of orange along the ocean. Now, we can use a little bit of the cerulean blue over here. And the reason I do that is I want to uh, highlight this uh, area here. So I will add a little extra cerulean blue. It, it won't hurt anything to make it a little darker there and we can make it darker here too and up here so we kind of disguise that darker tonal value into the painting so that we can get that real nice contrast of the white curtains and the blue sky And it looks fine. Perfect. Look at that. And we can do the same thing uh, above. If you want to put a little more darker tonal value with the blue above. Gives a little bit of that touch of light on top of those uh, canopies. Okay. 
and um, just a touch of cadmium lemon yellow on this sand here. If you put just a little, the tiniest bit of uh, cadmium lemon yellow on the sand, it looks great. It kind of gives it that bright sunny feel. A couple of splashes here with the um, yellow ochre, maybe a little raw umber. A couple of splashes with the raw umber just for the sand. And then if you do a couple splashes and they don't come out perfect, no big deal. Blot them up, blot them up like that. Blot up some splashes if they don't come out right. Just take the tissue, always have a tissue on hand really close by. And just tap up some things if they don't look perfect. Sometimes it's better off not splashing onto the paper when it's uh, damp and wet when you do a wash. So that's why it looks a little funny. But if you wait till this dries 100%, you can do a little more splashing if you want, just for that sand effect, like here. Like that. But that seems to be good. And I'm just going to add a couple more darks there. Couple more darks. The the darks are usually closer to the source of the shadow. Uh, a little more dark there. French ultramarine remain blue, burnt sienna. Okay, the paper is buckling a little bit. It might make the uh, it might make the the uh, distant water horizon line look a little bit wavy, but that's just the paper buckling, which is no big deal since we put a lot of paint on here. That that's going to happen. The paper, you know, the paper is going to buckle if you add an, a really nice watery wash to it. So don't worry about that. All right, so I hope everyone had fun, and uh, we'll uh, take the tape off here. Try this one again and again. It's a fun one to paint. And nothing like a beautiful beach scene, the tropical scenes, sand, ocean, beautiful blue skies, all the good feelings that go with being out at the beach and enjoying the sun, the fun. And we'll also uh, showcase this picture in the beginning of the video so that you can work from it. So you can actually draw and paint from the same picture if you want to. Let's uh, move this here. Let's zoom in. Okay. All right, a beautiful beach scene, tropical, lots of interesting things, figures, chairs, curtains, palm trees blowing in the wind, shadows, all the exciting things you like in a painting, right here. Okay, enjoy this one, have fun, draw it, paint it, and then try it a couple times, two, three times, uh, perfect it, and then uh, you'll have a lot more fun with it. Okay, we'll see you on the next video, and have fun, happy painting.